what are parenting triggers? Well, it's, it's those moments when you are with your child or your children where you immediately go from maybe zero calm to 100 in terms of wanting to react to the situations. Whining is the number one parenting trigger. And that is closely followed by kids not listening, disrespectful behavior, hearing the words, I hate you, physical pain, meaning your child bites you if it's, you know, if it's a two-year-old that bites you or hits you or pushes back. The, the sixth most triggering thing is sibling fighting. Boy, uh, I'm feeling triggered just hearing you read that list. <laughs> I feel like all of those get me just tied up in knots. Yeah, they do. And it, what other things contribute to um, to this, Mark, is the situation that you're in at the time. It may be that you're busy and or need to get someplace. And so when any one of these things happen in tandem with an agenda that you're running, schools, we got to get to school, we got I got to get to work, that kind of thing that can compound the way that the trigger feels inside your body. And parents have described triggered feelings to me to um, prickles on their hair, like prickles on their head, or just a, a strong feeling in their stomach, sweaty palms, some of the same things that anxiety brings on. But, but like I said, it's a, it can be a very physical reaction to when you have a trigger. So let's dig a little deeper into these, starting off with what you say is your number one trigger, whining. Whining, I think, deeply trips a parent's trigger because they're feeling, the parent at some level is feeling inadequate to meet the needs of the child on some level, you know. Um, and so they're just really, or they know maybe that the child is tired and whatnot, and maybe the parent is thinking, well, if I just got them to bed earlier last night, or if we had just not tried to do that 10th errand that I had to do kind of thing. I also yeah. feel like whining uh, is at an audio wavelength that is yeah. designed to cause as much distress as possible. <laughs> That's right. It's that, ooh. And it's funny how other people's kids whining doesn't necessarily trigger you the way your children do. I mean, number two is not listening. When, it, when a child is not listening to us, this kind of goes in tandem with number three, feeling disrespected. And that actually can go back to, when I work with parents, it goes back to childhood and not feeling heard or seen in their childhood. So therefore, they're now the adult. They're the parent. And so when we are not feeling heard, or we're feeling like we're being disrespected because we're not being heard, again, two and three, I think can kind of go hand in hand. We really feel like, wait a minute, I'm now in the parental role. You're supposed to listen to me. Um, I think also in terms of number three, disrespect, I've heard over and over again, parents say, I would never have spoken to my parents that way. I, I just, I can't, you know, and I think in part, we have to look at how are we, are we respecting our kids? Because we have to model what we want from them. When we tr treat our children respectfully, that is what we get in return. I feel like I'm sure a lot of people in my generation and, and uh, others can uh, relate to this, but obedience, obeying mom and dad was really drilled into us as kids. And it's one of those things that when you feel like you're not being obeyed, that just really is a gut punch when sometimes the action has nothing to do with obedience. Yeah. Yeah. And I want, I would just want to say also just here that educating yourself on your child's emotional development as they age is really important. I think that we get so tied up in getting ready for the baby to come and maybe learning of what it means to be a toddler or to have a toddler. But as our kids get into, you know, elementary school and middle school and high school, there's a lot of brain development and emotional development that goes on there. And so it's really important. I think once parents know, and I, I work on this with the parents that I work with, once parents know the changes that are going on in their child's brain and what they're actually capable of handling, we can, we have a much better perspective on whether or not, you know, this is coming from a malicious need to hurt us, or they just don't have the emotional maturity. Fourth is hearing the words, I hate you. 
And that most definitely is very triggering for parents because they, of course, feel like every day is a sacrifice. And, you know, give, 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 especially I know moms in particular feel, you know, that is the role. And then to hear, I hate you. But I will tell you as a, as a parent myself of five kids that I expect to hear that on some level and at some point, and that it's really important as parents to take what your kids say at t- triggering times a little less personally, and that's a practice. That's that's definitely not an easy thing, but when we can get to a place where we become a little bit detached from what they're saying because they're in their emotional brain, we are the ones that are teaching them to regulate, to calm down. And so when we go at it with them with the same fervor that they have, we aren't teaching them how to rein in their emotions. I think that's a really important piece, that idea that when you elevate, which is your natural response sometimes, you are modeling and teaching your kid how to elevate. And sometimes you got to go against every instinct and emotion in your body that is wanting you to ramp things up, stay calm and stay measured. Okay. So we are the emotional regulators for our children. We are the people that are teaching them how to rein in their emotions. So when we are not able to do that, we are not teaching them how to do that themselves. And the most important thing that we can do is to take good care of ourselves so that we can be emotionally available to them. The fifth one is physical pain. And that's if you're, you know, I know at one point, one of my sons bit me on the cheek and, you know, he he was like nine months old. And I think he was just loving on my cheek, but it really hurt. And it was so hard for me not to just want to like, you know, like react because he had hurt me. But when parents get pushed by their kids, literally physically or bitten or a door slammed in their face, that kind of thing is very triggering because Again, we don't expect that. We love on our kids all the time and we don't expect that to come back at us. And so the final trigger is if you have more than one child, sibling fighting. And that can be very triggering for a parent because sometimes they've thought they're thinking of their own childhood and how they used to fight so much with their siblings, that can be part of it. But also because we have this notion and idea that all our family is gonna get along really well together. And when two siblings are fighting, it actually hurts sometimes your heart to think that two kids that came out of the same body are, are fighting with each other. <laughs> so you, you get triggered and you're angry and you're frustrated and you're in the moment and your kids are driving you up the wall. What do you do? I want to say two things. One, remember, we are always, we have this conditional thought that we've got to nip things in the bud and take care of them right away. And sometimes we don't. Sometimes if we choose the path of ignoring the behavior that's going on, it will work through itself because sometimes what we pay attention to grows, right? So be careful. If it doesn't need to be addressed in the moment, go back to it later when you're not triggered. The aspect of when you're trying to do something or when you're in a hurry, all of these are magnified times 10. It's, it's, it's uncanny. And it's almost like they can sense that you have something else that has your attention and it's not them and they need to get it back. This is a, I mean, this is a big topic. If you, if parents can work on getting less triggered and it's a practice. I mean, the other thing I would say is of course, give yourself some grace because this is an everyday practice. And the other thing is there's a lot that can be said for if you have blown your top with your kid and they've triggered you of going back and saying you're sorry. There's a whole lot that can be mended by just doing that. Now you can't do it over and over and over again because your kid then just won't trust that your, your word is, you know, is, you know, that your word is any good, right? But, you know, give, we have to give ourselves some grace as parents as well. Let's say you are extra amped up, extra triggered because of an encounter with your kids. How can your spouse help in that situation? Man, I think you just got a tag team. Like you have to just be like, I'm out. 
you're, you know, like have, have a code with your, you know, maybe it's the word cupcake. I don't know what it is, but you know, like I'm out and, and then physically extricate yourself from the room and just let that other parent take over if you, if you have two parents in the home for sure. 